Hello, friends. Today, we begin our journey looking at the first two blessings given by Jesus in his beautiful Sermon on the Mount. And again, I would like to invite you, if you haven't already done so, to download your free copy of the wonderful book, Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, available in many languages at egwwritings.org. Let's begin by reading Matthew 5, verses 1 through 4. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. At first glance, this teaching might seem very strange. How can one be blessed when they are poor in spirit or in mourning? Now, in the book, Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, we are given this insight. He who feels whole, who thinks that he is reasonably good and is contented with his condition, does not seek to become a partaker of the grace and righteousness of Christ. Pride feels no need, and so it closes the heart against Christ and the infinite blessings he came to give. There is no room for Jesus in the heart of such a person. They feel that they are full, therefore they go away empty. Those who know that they cannot possibly save themselves or of themselves do any righteous action are the ones who appreciate the help that Christ can bestow. They are the poor in spirit, whom he declares to be blessed. Now, Ellen White goes on to say, whom Christ pardons, he first makes penitent, and it is the office of the Holy Spirit to convince of sin. So, when Jesus is referring to those who are poor in spirit, he is talking about those who feel their need of him, those who understand there is no good thing in and of themselves. This is in stark contrast to those described in the book of Revelation who say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, but do not realize they are actually wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. What is Jesus' counsel to these self-absorbed, self-sufficient people? I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. This, friends, is why the poor in spirit are blessed it is because when we realize our need of God, confess that need to Him, then He is able to pour out His blessings upon us and the kingdom of heaven will be ours. And what about those who mourn? Ellen White tells us in Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing that the mourning here brought to view is true heart sorrow for sin. As one is drawn to behold Jesus uplifted on the cross, he discerns the sinfulness of humanity. He sees that it is sin which scourged and crucified the Lord of glory. He sees that while he has been loved with unspeakable tenderness, his life has been a continual scene of ingratitude and rebellion. He is separated from God by a gulf of sin that is broad and black and deep, and he mourns in brokenness of heart. It is such mourning, she says, that shall be comforted. You see, friends, God reveals to us our guilt so that we will flee to Christ, confess our sins to him, and leave our burdens at the foot of the cross. Those who do this will most certainly be comforted. Christ's tender words also have meaning for those who are suffering affliction or bereavement. 
to every stricken one, Jesus comes with the ministry of healing, writes Ellen White. The life of bereavement, pain, and suffering may be brightened by precious revealings of his presence. God would not have us remain pressed down by dumb sorrow with sore and breaking hearts. He would have us look up and behold his dear face of love. The blessed Savior stands by many whose eyes are so blinded by tears that they do not discern him. He longs to clasp our hands, to have us look to him in simple faith, permitting him to guide us. His heart is open to our griefs, our sorrows, and our trials. We may keep the heart stayed upon him and meditate upon his loving kindness all the day. He will lift the soul above the daily sorrow and perplexity into a realm of peace. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. What a promise. What a blessing. Let me pray with you just now. Dear Lord, there may be some right now who are pressed down by difficulties, challenges, discouragement. Maybe they're mourning the loss of someone. Grief is filling their hearts. Somehow, Lord, through your power, help those individuals to look up to look into your face and to realize they have a blessed hope as they fix their eyes upon the eternal objective of knowing you fully and completely. And by doing so, their hearts will be filled with heavenly peace and joy. Thank you for this provision. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.